Okay, so let's get straight to the point. This second part of the video will be more focused on the Coro Online recognition, what documents you have to upload, and um, what you have to fill out in there generally. Now, please note that this uh, is more tailored for radiographers and other professionals working in the Philippines. I have been receiving emails and messages for um, regarding this, regarding Coro for, from other countries. And please note that I am not, as much as I would like to help, I don't think I am the right person to um, explain that to you because the rules and regulations are really dependent from country to country. So you can actually ask Coro directly. They usually email very fast naman. Now, okay, now let's go with the professional details. Um, just choose the holder qualification that was awarded outside of Ireland. Yes. That's really have you really have to choose yes in here and then um, choose your profession for me it's radiographer now for personal information for personal information what you have to upload in here is a colored certified copy of your passport now for me um, for every document that I had certified um, in the PDF form I actually attached the, the scanned copy of the um, a scanned copy of the document so I upload the scanned certified copy plus the scanned copy so aside from that um if you scroll down if you uh, if you see previous name in there and if you're married and you had your name change you can actually you actually have to upload a certificate um of marriage a certified copy of this one now aside from that okay for uh, for this part for this part this is what i uploaded for mine okay aside from that let's go with part three eligibility now for eligibility most of the documents that you will be uploading in here will be coming from the regulating body of your country in thus in this case prc now in which country did you obtain your qualification for me it's in the philippines and then um, if you scroll down you actually see this this portion now what you have uh, you have to upload in this are either of these two either okay so it's a certified photocopy of your prc id and or a certificate of good standing for me i uploaded my cogs in here and it was accepted i actually have heard some radiographers uploading a certified copy of your prc and it was accepted now if you want you can just um have the two and upload it in there now if you scroll down regulatory authority that will be prc and then for the specific um, address of the branch you can actually find it in your larry's account in the prc for me i inputted the address of baguio now if you scroll uh, further down you can actually just they're asking for um, your registration number which is your prc the number in your pic a uh, prc id and then um if you scroll down on this part on this part the documents that you have upload you have to upload this in here is your certificate of registration so um for me as on top of my certificate of reg uh, certificate of registration i also got my certificate of board passing and certificate of board rating i included this in my in this part um and for this three part i also have them uh, certified by the lawyer because for me i initially submitted this as a um they were not certified and uh thinking that they will be accepted because uh, prc will also send another copy unfortunately they emailed me back a month later and asking for a certificate copy of this one so for you just have them certified before you send this and then for this part i just answered this no no okay this is for the part three let's proceed with part four <laughs> okay guys let's go with primary qualification now before we go in that one i was actually reviewing the first part and i realized that i'm not actually looking at the camera i'm just doing this i'm doing that all the time and please note that i have i have notes that's why uh i am i don't I do not memorize everything in here and i took notes in here that's important for me that was um important during my recognition so i really hope that this quality the quality of this video is enough to help you i'll try to be more professional as i can as i can so i'm just new to this i really hope that i'm 
being able to I'm able to help you okay now let's go to the part four primary qualifications now for this qualification for this part most of the documents that you will be uploading will be coming from your university now for the institute details just put your just select your school on the um on this first part on this one on this first part now if you do not uh, if you look at the list and your school is not there, what you can do is go in the institute name in the original language. Just type your university there and then in the upper part, just choose the other. So just like this. Like this. Okay. Now, aside from that, if you scroll down, you'll see institute website. If your institute does not have an official uh, website or official email or they only have a Facebook account, what you can ask is... From your school is a certificate of no domain and then um, and or and or a letterhead from your school with their stamp address phone number and email indicating that they do not have the official email or an official website and they're using currently using these emails and websites or Facebook account and then for the educational details I chose this one so I do not really have a master else I just have my um, undergrad studies now this is also the things that i just in your level of study study mode country of qualification filipinas stuff like that now for the title of qualification in original language mine is bachelor of science in radiologic technologies that's what we actually call it in here in the philippines now for the um translation in this in filipino is i think it's bachelier ng agham sa radiologikong teknolohiya something of that sort okay it's you can actually find it in your diploma now for the starting date um first day of college and then end date is the last day of your internship now for this second part this is the downloadable form for this part this is a downloadable form coming from the web website itself and in here you can actually um, see your application number so the application number of coral recognition will be starting like this ca dash ra dash number 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 okay so you can actually find it in there and then next is the certificate awarded date um, the date on your diploma um, this is usually the date where you were officially uh, put into the register of your Department of Education actually on the diploma now certificate number for the philippines we call it actually a special order number now for this not all schools in the philippines have this now um some schools do not have them because um they either they um they either have an autonomous or deregulated status in ched meaning they are exempted to um, they ha they are exempted so you will not find a so number in your diploma so if i were you i would uh, con you have to confirm first with your university or your school if you're one of those schools listed as exempted now for the what else do we put in here okay now let's go with the document types for this part the downloadable form you upload your don downloadable downloadable form in here next this should be actually for me it was um, sealed and verified by my school and then next is the primary qualification for recognition is course curriculum or course syllabus now there are actually two types of documents that you can actually upload in here it's either a course syllabus slash curriculum this is the longer part a uh, longer version of your it's a longer version of your course syllabus I'm just repeating my sum. Anyways, this is has more pages. For me, it's 300 pages. And uh, a course, how do you, there was another term for that. I'll just put it in here. Now, this is a shorter version of that. Now, shorter description, that is the word. Now, course co syllabus or course curriculum is a longer version of the description of your um, degree, actually. And that, for me, that's what I uploaded. I had every page of this sealed uh, by my university and sent directly to Koro. On top of that, I actually asked my school a copy of my internship summary. Um, I had included this in this um, PDF and uploaded it in this part. Please note that mine was almost around 120 MB and the website accepted that uh, large amount. So I guess there's no limit. I haven't really encountered any 
errors when it up uh, when uploading large numbers of large data on my um, account now for this uh, for this for this next type primary qualification for recognition official transcript this is your tor please get a certified true copy from your school it should each uh, each page should still be sealed by your university now for this one for the next one primary qualification for recognition certificate of award diploma you should have your diploma in this um, for me i got a certified true copy of my diploma now let's go with 4.2 okay for the next part 4.1 research if a research is part of your course cur curriculum then choose yes if no if no just you just have to explain to core that it's not that it is not a part of your um, curriculum now for this for the number of word counts please include the title it's included in the number of word counts now if you still have a copy of your research you can actually have your school seal each page and then upload it as an additional document. Additional documents that you want to include will have to be uploaded on the top right version of your website. It's in here, like this. Now, if, um, for example, it's been years and years and you've lost a copy or do not have a copy, uh, and you still actually don't remember any details of your research, then you actually have to declare to Coro that you have lost it. Um, regarding this one, if someone has had this experience, kindly put the details below in the section area because I am not familiar if you need to ask your school to provide a letter that the research topic is already uh, lost. Now, aside from that, let's proceed with the placement. Now, for placement in internship, the terms of this may actually vary from country to country. Now, for a def definition, by definition of KORU, placement is a work experience given by the university, and internship is a work, work experience given by an employer. Um, if the uh, internship is issued by uni by your university during the course of your studies you can actually put it in placement so in, in in the philippines we actually call it internship now for this part you can actually put it on the placement portion now error okay error error now because i didn't know that this was the definition of placement and internship what i did was to follow the steps of my um, senior geographers who has done their coro which was to put uh, the same details in the placement and internship the only difference was that for the placement for the main duties part there is actually no limit for the word count while in the placement there is now for my verification sheets everything every verification sheets that i have gotten from this website i actually edited them to include these details and then um, if you scroll down, it actually asks you total hours in placement. This is why you ask a summary of internship from your school because it should be in there along with the modalities that you have handled during your internship. Now, for the part documents that you will be uploading for this part, please have your um, certificate of internship uh, certified by a lawyer and then uh, make sure that the person who signs actually the verification sheets make sure that the person who signs this one is either a qualified person in our profession in this case a radiographer may that be your ci your senior radiographer uh young senior that time or your chief rad tech either way but it is indicated that he is a rad tech now um Aside from that, I think that's it because for the 4.3, since you do not have a work experience experience given by an employer, just choose no. Now for 4.4, um, I do not have them, so I choose no. But in here, if you have a masteral's or a doctorate or PhD, you can actually input this one. Now. Post qualification employment. If you know, if you do not have previous employment, just choose no. If you have one, choose yes. Now, for if you have chosen yes, please make sure that it should be in a reverse chronological order, which would mean that the present one should be on top. Now, for this part, if um, for the present employment, 
if they refuse to sign your verification sheet because uh, there is an end date while you're current uh, written in the sheet while you're still currently employed you can just actually counter sign the end date and put present on it and make sure that the hr puts a stamp on that verification sheet now um, on companies where they do not actually seal outside documents because the verification sheet is considered an outside document you can act what you can do is ask a coe plus a certificate of no seal um, let's go with part six post qualification education for the 6.1 part education i do not have a data on this one however on the 6.2 trainings i do have a lot which is um, for me, I went with um, what you can do, for example, these trainings will be from TUV, uh, PART, NATCON, PNRI, PSNM, BLS, whatever, any trainings that you've undergone, you can actually, the shortcut for this is you can actually have the certi certificates provided, um, certified by a notary public along with the verification sheets. Just have them notarized and then upload. The hardest way, which is what I did, I emailed each organizer. Um, I emailed each organizer of these trainings and have um, asked a verification or a certificate of veracity and authenticity. Now, for the declaration, you do not actually have to get this certified by a lawyer. You just have to make sure that it is signed by you. And then, I guess that's it payment na okay congratulations on watching this video and that's it um, i will not say good luck i'll say do well because do well <laughs>